drive. She just doesn't have a car. She has a, she's a single mom, goes to college, but she doesn't have a car, so she hitches a ride with her friend who's a welder, who takes her to college about two hours before class starts, so she does her homework at the burger joint across from campus, and then he picks her up, takes her home, and she starts all over the next day. She eventually graduates, and uh, she starts working in a newspaper. And on those days when the, her car doesn't start, the newspaper sends out a delivery van, which takes her kids to school and brings her into work. Well, of course, this woman is me, and that's my daughter, Elizabeth. My name is Molly Cantrell Craig, and I am the founder of Women with Drive Foundation. And because I had that car, I had the ability to keep my job and provide a secure uh, future for my children. So after I started working at the newspaper, I started putting away enough money that I could uh, start giving back. So I volunteered for uh, Habitat for Humanity to be on their board, and I realized that we as a nation spend millions of dollars, literally millions with an M, probably billions if you look close enough, trying to get women employed. We give them job training, we give them continuing education, financial literacy, providing suiting, which is called rest with success. But we're failing. We're fumbling on the one yard line over and over and over again because we're missing a crucial element between the job and the woman. And that element is anyone? Anyone? Cars. 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 He doesn't have. Click it off. What you guys already figured out? She doesn't have a car. <laughs> she doesn't have a car to get her from her job, from her home to her job. And so when she can't keep her job, she falls back into the system, and we as a society all pay. So that, it just doesn't make any sense. So, in fact, statistically speaking, the number one reason welfare to work programs fail is lack of reliable transportation. And we, as a society, again, have spent millions of dollars preparing a woman for a job she can't keep, which is bananas. This is crazy. So what I did is I created an organization called Women with Drive that solves a problem that I encountered as a woman myself <coughs> as a child and get myself to a point where I could keep a job. So what we do is we serve as a bridge between the employers who are looking for a reliable workforce, who want to make sure that they've got someone who's going to show up for every day, and we also connect those women who want to work. These women don't want to live on welfare. They don't want to settle for life on welfare, and they're willing to invest in themselves. <clears throat> so where do we find these women? Well, the secret is to work the process in reverse. We go to those capacity building organizations that I mentioned earlier, the ones that provide the job training and the, and the financial literacy, and we say, we want you guys to identify and vet people for us. And then we're going to give them a car. We're going to give them what's missing, and we're going to follow them for two years until they can figure out how to make sure that they've got autonomy. And these community partners also help us identify employers. Uh, like, for example, in, in town, we have recently uh, started talking with the Jane Addams Resource Corporation, which is a, a wonderful opportunity for us to to close that gap, because they also put us in contact with employers. And then there's also the business aspect, where we identify uh, authorized service providers who do the oil changes and the tires, so that we're, we're funneling money into uh, the community to make sure that those independent shops are uh, helping women understand why the car is important and why it's a tool. So we've talked about this end of the spectrum, but it is a partnership. We are expecting those women to come across and, and do what they need to do to invest in themselves. So what's expected? Well, first of all, she has to um, be working with a caseworker for two years. She has to check in every month to find out what's going well and what's going wrong, because process is a very, very important part of teaching someone self-sufficiency. If they're living in a home where they don't understand how to solve a problem, how can you expect someone to learn what they've never been taught? It's bananas. So again, she works with that caseworker for two years. Two, she's got to be drug free. It's now on that right. Uh, she has to pay for the tax title, licensing, insurance, and fuel for her car. She's got to have some skin in the game. And then she also has to be either employed, have a firm job offer, or otherwise engaged in trying to get herself off welfare, which could be going to college or engaging in that training program. So, um, we're getting kind of some notice nationally. It's really exciting and a little bit exhilarating and kind of scary. Uh, we moved to Chicago last year because we were featured as one of the 32 global influencers in the social space by the Huffington Post. And we started getting people from coast to coast asking us for cars and, and for chapters. And in Iowa, we just didn't have the density of resources in order to make that happen. So we moved to Chicago where we were featured in CNN uh, in March of this year. 
In uh, the Shriver Report a couple weeks ago, we appeared on Robin Morgan's program in Washington, D.C. last Saturday. And uh, locally, we were on the, we were part of the conversation in the citywide on the table that was a uh, conversation sponsored by the Chicago Community Trust. So who cares? What does this say? This says that there's a lot of people who want a solution and they're willing to put some, some time into figuring out how to do it, which is why we're here. And that's why you're here, maybe. Um, so what do we need to succeed? Cars, cash, and collaboration. Cars, cash, and collaboration. So what do we do? Darn it, Murgatroyd. The cars we get from individuals, churches, dealerships, car dealerships. Uh, and even if the car doesn't work, we scrap it and put the money into the pile to help um, invest in women's autonomy. <laughs> the, uh, the cash that we use goes directly into programs to keep women moving forward when those oil changes and those tires that we pay for. And the collaboration we can use, whether or not you're going to be someone who can serve as an advisory member or a board member, perhaps you can be someone who helps us identify uh, a business that's looking for so someone to hire, or you can also be one of those um, community partners that helps identify women that are ready to take ownership of their own choices and their own lives. So those are the three things that have always basically boils down to. I'm really, well, yeah. So if you can provide any one of those things, give me a call. Let me know. Find us on the web. Email us. We're on Facebook, Twitter. I have business cards. I'm really interested in building a solution because I know it's possible. I know Chicago has the ability to make it happen. And uh, I invite you to be part of the solution and help us uh, build something great together. I appreciate your consideration. Thank you.